Hi YouTube, and this is JTrain997, and I'm back this time with my review of the Marvel Select Captain America the First Avenger Red Skull figure. Now get a good look at this bad boy here in the packaging. I was really excited to see we were getting a Marvel Select version of the Red Skull, seeing as um, we only got one from the three and three quarter inch line. And um, well, he was a cool little figure, I just wanted a bigger one. As you can see, um, Red Skull's only accessory is his pistol and the other half of the Cosmic Cube diorama. Um, now, before we go into the rest, I will say there was about four of these in my local comic shop, and there were pretty bad paint apps on each one. Uh, sorry to say, but beginning of the review, um, and it was really with the shading on his head and his buckle. Um, it's supposed to be the Hydra logo, but we'll get onto it more. It's out of packaging. It looks more like just a silver block. And um, the shading on in the comic shop varied from huge splotchy patches of black that run all over his skull to no black, and I got pro um, probably the best one, and I've still got some issues with it, but more on that once he's out. Over here, some box art. Red Skull on the back, and his read-up says, Left scarred and spiteful by an early test of the Super Soldier formula, Johann Schmidt used his newfound strength and ambition to create Hydra, an insidious shadowy agency determined to dominate the world through deviant science. Behind Schmidt's back, his superiors call him Red Skull, a fearsome title he has more than earned in his dogged pursuit of unconventional weaponry. I don't believe in the movie they said Schmidt created Hydra, although they didn't say he didn't either, so at least as far as I recall. But either way, a fantastic, well, for the most part looking figure. Let's open him up. And here we have the Red Skull out of packaging. Now, I'm real quick, the two pieces of his base, which we'll get onto later. Throwing those off to the side for now. And the Red Skull is a almost perfect looking figure. Um, What I find ironic is that the outfit is just astounding. Um, the paint apps on it are fantastic. And then you get onto the head. And um, you can see there's a lot of shadowing that's missing from mine, um, especially in the nose right there. He should have shadowing in the nose. There's kind of... You can either tell by the either side of his... either side of his face. Um, just some of the shadowing's missing. There's a lot of just bright red. And I chose that because it looked a lot better than the giant black splotches some of the other figures had. But it's a real shame to see that the paint apps went so poorly on this, because it is a really well-sculpted skull. Um, although I'm not crazy about the fact that he looks like he's puckering. But I can make peace with that. I like how the eyes are sunk back in there. Now, the rest of his costume is fantastic. really love the Hydra logo. When I reviewed the little skull, people were like, you can't put a swastika on there. I'm like, well, okay, I'll give you that, but what about the Hydra logo? He didn't have that either. Um, I really like how they've got some of the black glossy paint on there to make the strap stand out. Um, well, the outfit looks great except for that. You can see the buckle, where it's supposed to be the Hydra logo, essentially. It's just a silver block almost. You can see there's supposed to be something there, and you can kind of make out the Hydra logo, but not by much, which is unfortunate. Um... But other than that, as I've already said, I'm really loving the detail on Schmidt's outfit, or Red Skull's. Just some really great stuff. Now, his pistol, which is up here in his hand, you kind of have to keep fixing it because it does like to wobble around in there a little bit, but it does fit pretty well. Um, once again, really nice detail on the pistol. Just looks like a Mauser, to be honest. No holster for it, but I can make peace with that, and I wouldn't have him not holding it anyway. Now... As far as his articulation, Red Skull does a full 360 and appears no up and down at his skull. Well, some very slight up and down. Does a full 360 at the torso. No main abdomen movement. Arms are on a ball joint. Do a full 360. Go up, but it's very stiff. They only go up to about here on either side. Um, bend and spin at the elbow and spin at the wrist. Same for both arms. Now, the legs are hindered by the way his outfit is designed, yet... His legs have a lot of nice articulation, um, as you can see there, due to the fact it's turned to the side. His legs go forward, could go back and out if not hindered by his jacket, and are double-jointed at the knee, as well as having a very nice ankle joint. So, well, you can get some movement out of this leg. This one's just kind of stuck over here. So no movement, you're, you're not going to get much more movement out of that. So, let's pop his pistol back in his hand. Um, before we go into the base, I'll say with just the figure, um, there's a $20 price tag on Marvel Selects, and while I do I do love this figure pretty much just because I've always been a big cap guy, I don't really like the paint detail on his skull, as I've already said. 
Um, I don't think that turns me off completely from buying the figure, but I do wish it had been better. I also think it would have been nice to have given him a holster and maybe have given him an alternate hand holding the cube or something, which would have really worked with the display. But um, other than that, let's actually go on to the finished display itself. And here we have the Cosmic Cube base all assembled. Um, now it actually is pretty sturdy, surprisingly enough. Of course, um, you take the two halves of the diorama and they peg together, as you can see down there. You lay the piece that came with skull on top of it, and then you put the actual cube part over that. So, um, actually a really easy um, snap-together piece, and it holds together great, which is nice. Um, I was really disappointed the actual cube doesn't lift up out of the display, much like um, I thought it would, like Heimdall's sword did in the Thor display. But that's not the end of the world. It's still a nice little piece, although I am definitely missing that feature. Um, a lot of great detail, with the exception of there's a lot of paint run on it. Um, at first, I thought that might be, you know, intended to look like rust, but there's just way too much of it on each one of these things. Um, and it kind of runs throughout, so. Like I said, it doesn't make the base look horrible, but it is noticeable. So, um, a nice little collect ba um, collecting connect base. We'll actually get Cap and Red Skull out here. Um, there is room enough for both of them on it. Let's prop this up real quick. Um, although, be it, it still looks a little small compared to them. Um, I still do think it's a nice diorama. It wouldn't have hurt to have gotten some foot pegs in there. But um, as it stands, Cap and Red Skull are both solid figures. I'm running you about 20 bucks a pop. Um, now, I do think that each of these figures kind of has some flaws. Cap Shield came warped out of packaging. Red Skull has the obvious paint issues. Um, and I still really wish that cube could be lifted out. But at the end of the day, I still think these are great figures, and any Captain America fan or Marvel Select fan needs them in their collection. And that being said, this is J Train 997, and I'll see you soon, YouTube.